Okay, we're on the record. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we're in a congressional hearing or something, you know. <laughs> Indeed. Watch out. <laughs> oh boy, things are interesting in Washington, that's for sure. Hard to say where this whole thing's going. I'd rather mantra. <laughs> Yeah. The mantra is peaceful. <laughs> yeah. And it really does work. The mantra stops the mind. Yeah. Absolutely. That's what it's designed to do, and that's what it's been doing for a long time. Yeah, thousands of years. Yeah, basically. Thousands <laughs> of years old. Well, it goes with, uh, Maharaj says it traces back to Dattatreya, so I don't know exactly how, uh, that's a long time ago. I don't know, something about 2006 in my mind was just kind of mind-boggling in that illusion of time. 2006? 2006 wasn't that long ago. <laughs> well... It's beyond time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know what, John? I listened to that. Trish sent me a, you know, the uh, the one where he's talking, it's called the terminal or the terminus. Yeah, last terminal, yeah. Yeah, I guess, <laughs> I guess by that he's referring to, uh, okay, guys, this is it. You know, this yeah. is your opportunity and uh, you don't have to keep on, you know, returning uh, whatever returns. I'm not sure what that is, but in any case... Um, there's an opportunity to um, move on. Yeah, well, I mean, this is not a, like a revolving door type teaching. It's not like go in, get something. Well, if it doesn't work, then move on to something else or something like this is it. Yeah. This is the lineage, the last stop. This is Maharaj has opened up the whole thing for, for your selfless self with this mantra, inviting the attention of the invisible listener, the whole everything is open. Like Maharaj says, the open secret. And if you listen to all of Maharaj's talks formlessly, like he says, compare yourself to sky. He's speaking to that sky. Even though you're believing that you're hearing what he's saying through the body form that you're believing yourself to be, and then you're saying, I'm not this body. The one that's listening is not body, has nothing to do with body. Yeah. And that's the one that it's impressing. The invisible listener. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I, you know, if you, if you listen to everything that's spoken about without form, and when I say without form, that means any ideas or how you're trying to take this knowledge in and how you're trying to relate it to you. Don't relate it to you. Relate it as if he's speaking to you that you are this sky, that you're this, your sky. Yeah. There's no individuality. There's no sense of individuality. You're not seeing like the people on the earth or anything like that. You're literally sky, but you don't know your sky. You're just everywhere. And this invisible, anonymous, spontaneous presence that you are is more subtle than sky because sky appears on that spontaneous presence. So when you're listening, listen in that way. Not like, oh, you know what? And then try to relate it to something that you've heard and use memory or use anything to do with who you believe yourself to be. Listen without any ideas or beliefs, completely free, clean and clear. And even when you're listening, if you mantra, that'll help allow you to keep yourself clean and clear. So you are listening and it's being engraved on that invisible listener that is absolutely formless. Yeah, I'd like to remind myself that there is no listener in body form. There's only listening and that isn't done by me. That that is done. Uh, that's 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 the the self listening to itself. The listening is the listener because the listener is listening through the the media of these ears and and such. But the listener is is one. The speaker and the listener are exactly one and the same. So everything has to be listened to from that perspective of sky. Like everything, how does it relate to sky? Well, it's just, nothing relates to sky. How are you prior to being this? I don't know. Well, there's, what is there prior to being this? There has to be something there that being this appeared on. 
that's that spontaneous presence, but spontaneous presence not in body form. So then we disregard this body completely and you speak bodiless. Oh. And you listen in the bodiless sense, anything that you're, that you're saying, you're like, oh, that, I can relate to that or I feel that. No, 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 no. That's a time for mantra because the speaker is bodiless. The listener is bodiless. The only way that there's any bodies is because these eyes are seeing a form on this screen. But even it's kind of cool that we're on the screens because we're not in each other's presence physically, but we are the same one. Hmm. Take away the bodies and the speaker and the listener are that formlessness. This, the sky that has absolutely nothing to do with body. Hmm. And again, like the breath, breathe in, breathe out. But the breath, you, all of us are breathing the exact same air. Even though mine is inside this house, and yours is inside your house and everybody's inside and you're breathing in this body and breathing out the body, but it's all one air. There's, there's no division in the air. So it's breathing in and breathing out all the air. The air is everywhere. It's inside this house, inside your house, but it's just air. It's only separated by houses and bodies. And the presence is more subtle than this air. Because air can be perceived using body form with this sense of presence. Mm -hmm. Air appears upon your spontaneous presence. Yeah. You don't need it after uh, the body the, the dissolves. There's no need for the air either. Well, and again, the, the body is just the five elements. And the five elements, they conglomerate and get together and create this body form. And... This body form begins deteriorating from day one, going back to the elements from, from which it was created from. Mm. Yeah. The only thing is the identification with the body. This has to be broken, and mantra allows this because as these train of thoughts that are flowing, that are being identified with as my thoughts, my life, and my doings, the mantra erases this slowly, silently, and permanently until there's just movement, but no one moving experience but no one experiencing right witnessing but without a witness mm. because there's nothing to witness there's no there's no thought train going on or any labeling going on and and, and labeling is the the joy of the mind the mind likes to label things and then say okay i put this in this little box i reason this i use my intellect i now understand this thing now i can put it on the shelf it's finished but see, if I listen in the way of sky, how, how? How can I sit there and say, oh, I understand this. I can put it on the shelf. It's formless shelf. Yeah, the understanding is for the me. It's for the, for the uh, I don't know. Somehow there, there's a comfort in that, maybe. The feeling of um, understanding can, I don't know, maybe re is reassuring rather than dealing with any kind of fear. But again, fear, reassurance, all of this appeared upon your spontaneous presence. Prior to being this, there was no fear, there was no reassurance, nothing was needed. The needs and requirements came along with the body. So when the body falls, it's natural that the needs and requirements would go along with it. Yeah. That's Maharaj always points back to how you were prior to being this. How you were prior to being this. Which sky, sky does not know it's sky. It's everywhere. It's in all things. It's only when you try to attach yourself to an individualized body form and say, this is me. But sometimes I, I think it feels like annihilation because, you know, I was watching this nature program and just watching what happens in nature, you know, things uh, chase other things and eat these things. And I was just re realizing, you know, there's just the, you know, that that's just, the way it is. And so just seeing my own resistance to that, you know, when you see the, you know, the cheetah chasing the, the rabbit, you know, you tend to want to, you know, root for one of those, <laughs> you know, but it's, you know, it just seems like it, it comes up this whole business of survival, you know, so then I, it, it kind of plugged me into, you know, that the fear of not survive of annihilation, I think, you know, mm -hmm. and that's just part of nature. 
But on the other hand, yeah, there is that that comes up because of the body. Yeah, the beingness. You you're afraid that you won't. And Maharaj talks about this too, about how the ants, when the selfless self knows itself in the form of an ant, and you pour water, the selfless self in the form of the ant runs because it is afraid that this knowingness of itself will terminate when that that itself is all this is this body once this body goes i i am no more but that's just not the case and you'll know this and see this as you use mantra more and more and more the knower of the sense of presence that presence you'll know oh so that i i am not body i was not body i'm not going to remain body that spontaneous invisible anonymous identity that selfless self sky, space. These are the objects that are appearing inside the space but have nothing to do with the space, have no way in, in any kind to affect the space in which these objects are appearing. Right. You know, I, I did an interesting experiment the other day, this might be good for other people too, is I was in the grocery store and I was just, um, I guess it wasn't the mantra so much as it, it was just like, I just kept saying, I am space. I am, you know, I'm not a form. I'm the space of walking through this, this, uh, you know, this, this store. And yet it was like space walking through the store. And, and there wasn't anyone there in the sense of no judgments or anything. It was just like, walking around a space yeah so in it's it's basically what you're describing is that no knowing state the state in between knowing and not knowing is there's no you without a you there can't be a world so there's no mind activity of what's going on the only thing that i would highly kind of look towards and the reason mantra could help you more is because there's not the sense of i'm doing this i'm looking and seeing that i am space Right. Mantra allows you to sense and feel and, and, and move into this seeing without actually you doing it. You're concentrating on mantra. Therefore, there's no egoistic sense of I that can say I'm doing something. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, it was like a, like a practice or something. But yet then if there's a practice, then it seems like, you know, sort of implies a practicer. <laughs> yes, there's an egoistic sense of I that can take credit for doing something and also for gaining something. Yeah. Yeah, maybe that's an interim step, I don't know, but you're right. That Like Maharaj says, the pricking from backside, the ego is pricking from backside. You're doing, and it's good, you know, okay, you're you're seeing in this way that, oh, I'm space and all of this is appearing inside of that space, including this body. And I'm looking around and I notice that the forms are just forms and there's no, nothing to say about it. Wow. Good, except there is an eye that is still there, subtle eye, doing this and seeing this. Wow. Having done mantra with mantra, just concentrating on mantra, this will be the seeing but there won't be a seer that's that's taking credit for this seer. Yeah. Yeah, that's good, yeah. Yeah, the mind is sneaky. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> mind is very, very, very tricky. Number one, you know, like Maharaj says, as you're doing the mantra, you may start to feel like, oh my gosh, you know, all these problems are coming. My mind is busier than it was was before I used to be so peaceful and in peace and now I'm not in peace but that's because the mantra is erasing that one who was trying to be at peace who truly wasn't at peace but had just created an environment around themselves where they could be peaceful like they say about what's the use of spirituality if you can only be in the om peace type state on a mountain you know, when no one's there to bother you. Wow. Then you can be, I mean, you're like, wow, my mind is so still. Everything's beautiful. Nothing is bothering you. There's no birds. There's no goats even. You're just there, you know. But the idea is then that through mantra, the peace is real. Because there's not a you that's covering up that peace. 
instead of trying to create a false sense of peace, or instead of putting all the eggs in this peace basket, you're just removing all the layers that were blocking your perception of the peace that you are, that is always there. Yeah. Yeah, the nature, uh, your nature is peace. Rather exactly. Than it's the mind that comes in and, you know, has all these concerns and, you know, and exactly. the root of that is the identification, you know. The, That's what you see so many people and they go to the meditation centers and they dress a certain way to go to the meditation centers and they bow and then they sit on the cushions and they make sure that the incense is just right and the lighting is just right and all this kind of stuff. But that's the big time I, egoistic I, preparing itself to meditate and get rid of that I. <laughs> oh, yeah. Very good. subtle. <laughs> Yeah. And mantra is so beautiful because you just concentrate on mantra. It's the same as the breath. Like Maharaj says, breathing in on the one, breathing out on the other, breathing in on the one, breathing out on the other. And while you're working, while you're driving, while you're walking, any time. And eventually it runs all by itself and you're only seeing it and noticing it when there's an I am somebody else that's coming through that peaceful state to disturb the peace in the moment because there's a belief that something needs to be seen or handled by this little me. Mm. Yeah. But it also gets handled anyway, even if it's not a me that's yeah. doing it. That's the amazing thing is that because when I look at, you know, why I do a certain thing, it's, it's because some thought comes in and says, okay, it's time to do this. But I didn't create that thought. You know what I mean? It, it just appeared. And then there was a, a movement. And I could have another thought could appear that says, no, don't do that. But those are all thoughts that, I, that are not, I'm not creating any of that. And as long as they're not psychological thoughts about a you, you know, like Maharaj says, picking up the water or whatever. And just in the last uh, talk that he had done, he said, like, be like the child that keeps saying no to mom and dad. You know, no. Mind comes in and says, oh, I want to do this thing or that thing. Or, you know, if we do this, this will happen. You just say, nope, 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 nope. Mm. You say no to the mind by pushing it aside through mantra. These thoughts that come in and try to create an I am somebody else and a mind and a thinker and all these subtle bodies you're erasing this idea, this body knowledge, because like Maharaj says, everything is in that bubble of body knowledge. Everything you're listening to, everything you're understanding. That's why if you listen to it as if you were sky, comparing yourself to sky or space, what would sky or space, how would it be listening? Like you said, seeing all of this inside of itself, and knowing that Maharaj is talking to that, not you. Not the ideas and beliefs you're holding about yourself as this personal person. He's speaking directly to and from that space. So when he says, you know, I am Brahman, Brahman, I am, it's not for me to sit there and say, I am Brahman, Brahman, I am. I am Brahman, Brahman, I am is directed towards that space that I am when I'm not holding and believing myself to be this body. Mm. Along with the body, so many requirements happen. And first off, I. That sense of presence is identified with as I. I am, and then all the little nouns and stuff that come after that. I am a man. I am uh, John. I am responsible for this. I work at such and such. But like he says again, in the morning, when it's just the sense of presence, with no identification, no anything, just a sense of presence holding as long as possible through mantra throughout your day. And again, there's nobody doing it. It's just you're inviting attention of the invisible meditator, the invisible listener within you, that I am not body, I was not body, I'm not going to remain body. Because you're not, but you think you are because you're related and attached currently to this body, which comes with all this body knowledge. 
And the desire to acquire things for a body. Right. And the desire to do a good job, to get, you know, a reward. Yes. And all that sort of thing. Yes, yes. Yeah, even all the spiritual goals, supposedly spiritual goals. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it, it requires some courage to let it all unfold without there being a, a controller or a somebody, you know, running the show. Because <laughs> the show is going to do what it does anyway. You just have this uh, delusion that you're doing something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it's like, John, you mean what you're saying is not new. It's not something we haven't heard before, but it's sort of like, we just, uh, for me, I just need you to keep pounding and pounding and pounding and pounding for it to, to fully sink in. You know, intellectually, I understand, but there's this, there's something that, you know, still just clings to, to being a person that's, you know, doing the mantra and all that junk. That's why this is so helpful. I mean, you know, and, and it's not like it's not like a school where we're learning something. It's just that somehow or other, we just need to be pounded on the head. Yeah, reminded. <laughs> you say it nicer than I do. <laughs> you can pound yeah. on your head, but I'll be reminded. <laughs> <laughs> refreshing your memories of how you were prior to this body idea and listening in that way. That's nice. Yeah, because you, you take a, the whole myth of, out of it and it's like pure listening or pure, clean, um, I don't know, awareness. Of the of what's being said, um, you know, and he is speaking to, oh, uh, don't do this or don't don't go from master to master. He says these things only because you have to understand the Maharaj is your own selfless self, right? And you have to have complete faith in that. It's as if God, you know, so to speak, has incarnated in front of you and said, okay, you're free. Yeah. And then you say, well, that's very nice, but you know, I'm going to go see this master, or I want to see that, or do this temple, or I read this, or I like this guy. His message really resonates with me. But his is you. See, the more you keep going, everything is through the body as other. Like if I believe I'm a body, then I'm going to want to gain knowledge from another body. But when I know I'm bodyless, then that doesn't make sense that I need knowledge. Knowledge is just to know yourself in a real sense, and that invites the attention of the invisible listener. You are not body, you were not body, you're not going to remain the body. There is no further knowledge needed. Like Maharaj has said a couple of times, I think it's very good. You are not trying to be a master or PhD in Advaita Vedanta, or in philosophy, or any of these sort of things, in spiritual philosophy. This is not the purpose. And if you're acquiring body knowledge so that you can speak in this way, then it's going to be very problematic because you're, you're, you're worse than it was before because you're feeding the egoistic eye that now I know these spiritual terms. That's why I love Maharaj doesn't use spiritual terms unless a questioner will use a spiritual term, in which case he will. But he tries to just cut, cut, cut. Yeah. Did you know any spiritual terms prior to being this? Did you know any, without this body, do you know any of these spiritual terms? Have everything that this body has heard is illusion. So why try to add that on? Why try to take that on yourself? The idea is to discard, 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 not acquire. Well, people are so used to seeking and reading and, uh, you know, uh, you know, all these different things. They've been on the journey for many people, I would say been on the journey for so long that we picked up all this stuff and um so then it needs to be you know simplified or you know not it's not that it's wrong it's just that all of it gets to be too much baggage to be holding on to and it's held on to in fear 
Because basically the reason you're seeking is because you haven't found the answer that you want. You found the truth, but it hasn't exactly gelled with what your concept of the truth would be. Mm. This is the main de development of, of, of spiritual seeking. I hear something and it resonates, and then it kind of resonates with other ideas I've created. And the idea, the most idea that I want is that I want to exist forever. But I want to exist forever as myself that is not. <laughs> And I'm looking desperately to find the magic solution of the chakras or the, the temple or this master that says I need to do sadhanas or something so that I can get that conceptual answer of what I want. I want to exist forever, even though I don't exist as what I believe myself to be. Yeah. I can't handle the fact that when, when we talked about this too, I watched this video of us talking the other night about the nuclear explosion and how beautiful it would be because the mind won't sit there and say, well, what are people going to think of me? Or did I leave a good legacy? Or how did I look at my funeral or whatever? The mind can't say any of these things. <laughs> Bang, it's gone. Everybody is gone. Mm -hmm. And see, that's good because that's facing fearlessly the idea that it's finished. Yeah. The presence that is maintaining itself the spontaneous presence on which all of this arose, this whole experience that we're having, just like the dreamer, is going to be there after leaving the body because it was there prior. The knower will be, the knower knows itself, excuse me, through body form. That knower is formless. After the form is gone, the knower remains, but there's nothing to be known. And the, uh, that's Maharaj. Everything comes out of nothing. Everything is, dissolves back into nothing. In between, there appears to be something. But that appearance of something is nothing. And it's only for a time. That's why people love the idea of heaven and, you know, that, that you're going to be an angel on a cloud and enjoying your life and having harps and... <laughs> And all this kind of stuff, but it doesn't even make sense when you think about that, because how could heaven accommodate all the different individual people and all of their heavenly <laughs> concepts? It doesn't even make sense. <laughs> the idea is that it's no longer in this disturbance. As, as Maharaj says, body knowledge is not tolerable. Because you're constantly trying to protect this, this body and this being that you believe yourself to be. When all of this idea arose upon your spontaneous presence, and when you know yourself in a real sense, the, you will feel it. And when you know yourself in a real sense, and you're formless, what form could you possibly desire? And even if you think about individual soul, the individual soul being formless by nature, how is it separate from the, quote, big soul or the self that's also formless? Two formless somethings can't, like, be separate. It just doesn't make sense. That's why when Maharaj says, see yourself as formless and see the master as formless, and there is, can be no separation. Mm. But listen to everything, the teachings, the bhajans, formlessly. Meaning not to acquire it as additional body knowledge, but listen to it as in the moment it's inviting the attention of the invisible listener. It's strengthening the devotion to selfless self through body form. Yeah, and that's it's the, not for you that don't exist. Right. Yeah, because the, the me, it's... Um, just caught up with things that come and go, you know, and even the me comes and goes. So, you know, there isn't a, um, a st uh, an entity that is gathering all this stuff that's, uh, it's, uh, uh, or achieving a particular state. There's no me to do that. There's no. Exactly. And you know this because you're, you're me, like, like you said, in deep sleep, you don't have a me. There's no, no me in deep sleep. There's a me and dream, which is where you're projecting your dream world from. 
And the waking state is the same kind of way. The, the, the deep sleep is, is, is basically yourself without any ideas or beliefs. There's no me there. But you can also experience that in meditation. Yeah. And you can also experience that, quote, lack of a me through mantra. You can also experience that lack of a me. We talked about before driving. You know, you're driving and you're just looking at the scene. Or you might be on the beach and you're watching the waves. And there's no me in that moment because there's no sense of a self that's identifying with anything. You can watch a sunset and before you say, oh, it's a beautiful sunset, you're one with it because you haven't spoken to separation. And accept yourself as self. There's no God, no Brahman, no Paramatman, no master. This you must accept fearlessly. And that means all appearances on your spontaneous presence are illusion. Now, what does that mean for you? In your daily life, in every moment, you step forward and master then steps forward. You know, all the times that you say, oh, I should have not have, you know, been angry with this person. I should not have done that or whatever. Knowing, see, it's strangely that the selfless self responds, like Maharaj says, what you impress reflects. The reflection is the world because the seer's reflection is the world that you're seeing. So what you impress, it reflects. If you are living like Brahman, you act like Brahman, which doesn't mean, oh, I'm the best in the world and all this kind of stuff. It means everyone is my own self. Therefore, each one of these forms that I'm speaking to is my very own self. So patience, tolerance, understanding, all of this is automatic. And as I behave in this way, that selfless self that's reflecting what is being impressed, the bhajans, the mantra, remaining with my selfless self, and continuously holding that everyone is my self. Yeah, sometimes it's hard to do that because you don't always like other people, and then you, uh, you know. <laughs> no, 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 they're yourself. I, I know. <laughs> that's that's a scary part because you know, like, oh, is that me? You know. <laughs> but there has to be a you before you can judge another. Otherwise, it's just your own reflection, and you know this. Yeah. A me has to form with ideas and beliefs, likes and dislikes. Mantra erases this concept. Mm. There is no me that forms likes and dislikes against anyone. It's just literally a mirror. Yeah. And a bunch, you're just interacting with your own self. And again, using the example of on the train, somebody steps on your foot, looks you right in the eye, smiles like, ha, 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 what are you going to do about that? Mm. But in, if you don't respond to that, you don't take the touch of that as being the reality. And instead you remain with the reality of that's my own selfless self. All of this is happening inside myself, both the body that I believe that I'm using as John and the body of this quote, other person are selfless self. It cannot be any other way. So you do not respond and give yourself away in that moment. Instead you walk away. Now that's how selfless self impresses upon the reflection of, oh, so that I. That's why Maharaj says, take one step, he takes the next step. Take one step, he takes the next step. Fearlessly. Forget about who you like and don't like. Get rid of your own self and there will be no likes or dislikes. It will just be your own self. The job is yours, basically. Right. No uh, changing or, um, you know, <clears throat> I, I like the part in the talk where he said something about good thoughts, bad thoughts, good dream, bad dream. You know, yeah. I mean, it's all the dream. And so it kind of uh, destroys the judgments because, you yes. know, if it's all a dream then, you know, so what if, if some of it is good and some of it's bad? You yeah, know, sure. that's not only the mind judging what, what's happening. Don't let it impress upon you so that it reflects in your experience that 
you know, something's bad. Oh, and it impresses upon you that it's bad. This person is bad or this thing is bad or this is bad. No, it's a dream. Yeah. Truly understand and live as if your waking state was the same as when you go to sleep at night and dream. Yeah. And mantra allows you to see this reality. There's no difference between dream and waking state. And the cool thing is when you start behaving like this, when you truly step forward in courage and forget about all the concepts of body knowledge that you were impressed upon you, like Maharaj says, from childhood till today, you've been told and are, are, this world is real and cause and effect and all this. It's not true. Master says it's not true. Master says the entire world is illusion. Your illusion, I am illusion, Maharaja's illusion, everything, all entire world appearing on spontaneous presence is illusion. So know this and behave in that way. In the moment, you can't do anything. Like Maharaj says, good thoughts and bad thoughts, you decide which thought to, to take and which thought not to take. And this is how. In the very moment, in the direct moment, selfless self, knowing itself in a real sense, behaving as that. Master says you're a Brahmin, live like a Brahmin. Master says you're master, live like a master. And not the egoistic concept of what master or Brahmin would be like. Like, oh, I want people to bow at my feet and, and throw roses at me and all this nonsense. No. If you were a Brahmin, you would have no desire for any worship or any praise or any anything from anyone because it's all your own self. And you'd use the body that you're currently believing yourself to be as an instrument of devotion to yourself. But you would not have any trouble, no hatred, no jealousy, no nothing of anyone because it's all your own self. And behave like this, truly, in the next moment, behave like this. You know, somebody bangs on your door and says, hey, turn that music down. That's your own selfless self. It's the chance for you to step forward fearlessly. And then you're living the reality. Like Maharaj says, Master doesn't talk about reality. A master lives reality. And the courage then comes automatically. The mantra comes automatically because you're one with your selfless self. And there's no disturbance because you're just one with yourself, with self. You're one with everything and all things. My presence is in every being. I know this, so the next moment I behave this way. When the next person I see starts to give me a hard time, patience and tolerance. Like Maharaj says, forgive and forget, patience and tolerance. This becomes automatic because it's your own self. Mm. Imagine if you had cloned yourself. You had four of you that look exactly like you roaming around your house. And they were doing things that were irritating you. But it's you. <laughs> like all their, all their everything is you. Now, of course, in the selfless self, all the different bodies are totally different. They look different. They have different color, all this kind of stuff. Because all these coverings over your own selfless self look to the eyes as different. But look past the body covering that you know you are not and see yourself underneath the covering of this body that happens to be in front of you. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, there's, uh, you know, uh, thinking about seeing yourself all over the place, I think, you know, sometimes I fight with myself, you know. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, you know, certain thoughts come up and I'm like, oh, no, 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 you don't go there. You know, so there's like this little battle going on inside because it does seem to, I don't know, there's this kind of discipline. I, I, I was thinking that the other day. There's a discipline that needs to, or, or maybe it's just a, an enlargement of the, uh, the field of understand, you know, where there isn't like an internal battle going on. Yeah, I mean, you just have to have the one-pointed selfless self-devotion, striving to know yourself in a real sense, no matter what, no matter what cost it may be, because you're not going to lose anything anyway. But 
That's the mindset, so to speak. No matter what, I must know myself. No matter what, I'm going to use mantra. Master has said, if I believe master is my own selfless self in body form that says, hey, listen, this mantra, listen to bhajans, you're not what you believe yourself to be. You're not body, you were not body, and you're not going to remain the body. So this idea that when you leave the body, there is no leaving the body because where are you going to go? There's no place for you to go because you're everywhere. You have been assuming that you're inside a body and that this is you. It is not. Okay. That's what uh, Ramana Maharshi said. He, he, they said, you're, he's dying. And he said, where would I go? Yeah, there's nowhere. It's, it's just like the breath. If you were your breath, you breathe in, breathe out. You go everywhere, all back into the air. But where is you? Maharaj talks about the bucket. If you take a bucket and say, this is my bucket, and then you dump that bucket in, or even don't dump it, just drop the bucket into the ocean. Where's the water in the bucket? Where's the water in the ocean? How, where does it go? How does it, how? It's absorbed into the reality. Oh, from Keith. I'm a little afraid. Oh, where's my mouse? There it is. I'm a little afraid to have Other. others that I know listen to these talks. They will think we are all nuts. <laughs> they see no break in the identification, I guess. And though I have something in me that isn't quite ready to give up that much, I am familiar that I also am willing to give up. But also I have found that although some of this sounds far out, some of it hits home. So if they give it a chance, they might pick up on it. Well, again, remember every, uh, yeah, Mahara says this too, not to like to try to impress on anybody else. The idea is that master has shown you the whole elephant. You know this whole elephant. Each individual person that's seen a part of the elephant is not wrong. You know, the guy who's holding on to the tail and says elephant is like a rope or the lady who's holding the trunk and says elephant is like a snake or something like this or the, the, the hoof or the, the leg or whatever. Each one is exactly correct in their understanding. You're seeing the whole elephant, but it's not for you to sit there and show them something that they have not yet experienced yet or may not be ready to experience. This is the truth, that you're here because selfless self has drawn you here in body form. And not every, you know, it's, it's not like going out, even Siddhara Meshra Maharaj says, it's not for disseminating amongst the people. And Nizargadatta Maharaj always at the end of his talks is like, listen, you know, don't just go out and willy-nilly share this knowledge to others because A, they're not going to accept it. B, like you said, they're going to think you're nuts. Even Maharaj, I remember in one of his books, he said, we do bhajans here and do this and do that because otherwise the, 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 the people w would want to crucify him. You know, they, they'd want to burn him at the stake for some of the things that are said. To sit there and said, I am this and I am that because they don't understand that it's speaking. That is speaking through body form, not this person who suddenly has understood that I am this. Again, like we said, with the sky, with the space, it's, it's speaking from that place to that place. And the bodies are not in the way, but sort of a in the way. <laughs> Because everybody's understanding themselves as an individual person. And again, as a person, the concepts that I think sound good to me, I take. The concepts that don't gel with what I already think, I don't accept. The idea that Nizargadatta Maharaj and Ramakant Maharaj, they're constantly pointing you back to your formless self because the formless self can't hold concepts about itself. And if it does, it knows that's the body knowledge that's still poking from backside.
Listen formlessly. Which you are anyway, actually. The invisible listener, everything's being impressed on the invisible listener and is going to be reflecting in the experience. That's why your experience you're going to have in each moment, there will be, like Maharaj says, each moment is very, very, very precious because you're creating in your experience a chance for you to fearlessly step forward. And once you begin to fearlessly step, stepping forward, you'll see that the momentum is there for you to fully live freely as your own selfless self. Using body, but not being used by body. Using mind, but mind is only an instrument to be used, as Maharaj says, sparingly. Anything that's used in excess is poison. And mind, ego, intellect are the subtle organs that came along with this body. You, the self, the self, have no mind, ego, intellect. What you say is so clear, but there's still something in this form that's holding on to identity. Again, how you were prior to being this and how you were after leaving the body, that's your ultimate truth. All needs, all requirements came along with the body, and the body is not going to last. You are not body, you were not body, you're not going to remain the body. And how can sky or space hold on to anything? Only the reason is because sky or space, seeing itself in body form, believes that after this body form has dropped, this beingness has dropped, I cease to exist. So know yourself in a real sense, and this will not arise. And through mantra, this, is, this will happen. Slowly, silently, permanently. These concepts, all this body knowledge will be erased. Maharaj says, the antivirus software. And all the ideas, the I, that you're holding and believing about yourself and trying to protect is the virus that this mantra will erase. Slowly, silently, permanently. When I'm here, the knowing is, is easy. You know, I can get it here. And then I seem to forget because of your concentration and your attention. Right now you're concentrating on your selfless self and hearing from that sense of selfless self. As, as you start to have your daily activities, there's a layer of mind and thought that's sort of not covering, but there's a layer of mind and thought. And if those ideas and thoughts are believed in, then that layer grows stronger because with every thought believed in comes a lot of little baby thoughts. So all of those get together and then block that sense of presence and that that you are and you begin to believe the illusion it's very easy to be drawn back into the illusion and like maharaj says you know money publicity sex uh, power all these things they're they're constantly vying for your attention and you just have to know it's illusion if you were inside your dream right now and somebody said, hey, you won the publisher's clearinghouse or this or that, just stop doing mantra. But you know it's inside the dream and it absolutely doesn't matter. And the idea is that you want to wake up from the dream and know yourself in a real sense. You don't give yourself away for anything. Doorbell rings. You can go answer the doorbell very nicely. Keep mantra, keep with yourself the self. Somebody gives you good news, bad news, whatever, understanding it's just a dream. 
And in dream, good news, bad news, like Maharaj says, you wake up, it's done. I like how Maharaj says, your friend, you see them die in the dream, and you're suffering, like, oh my God, my friend, I love this friend, this so nice friend, and they die. And then you're waking up and seeing them the next day at work. And treating this waking state as if it is a dream, because it is, that's the reality. Mantra, and behaving this way. See, it's gotta be put into action. Like, Ma, you know, Maharaj says, this action. And the only action that you can do is what's right in front of you right now, stepping forward fearlessly, and then he takes the next step. And begin asking questions of this selfless self. You yeah, know, that, during mantra. Go ahead. That's another thing he said that I thought was interesting. He says, make your selfless self talk to you or something. Yes. What, what does he mean by that exactly? Could you expand on that a little? To make your selfless self talk to you is the impression <laughs> that is being reflected that, yes, this is... A question comes up, oh, so should I do this or should I do that? There's an internal commentary and a way to go, a way to choose choicelessly and continue with mantra and everything is being reflected. You make your selfless self talk to you because that sense of presence is all you're wanting. And inside, these questions start to come and answers start to come spontaneously. And you know it's not like mind, ego, intellect that's doing this. They're the, the instruments that are used to deliver the message from your selfless self to your selfless self, and you'll know. That sense of presence as you feel it. Your selfless self, because right now in, in conversation, ask a question, answer, talk, this and this, it's a two-way dialogue with your own selfless self. Make your inner master talk with you. Yeah. And, and there's a recognition that it's from there, not from the mind. Well, because the mind doesn't really talk. It's not, there's, it's not like that. Your, your mind is basically just a flow of thoughts identified with as my mind. Yeah. When you're thinking a thought into action then you're perceiving this concept of a thinker and that the thought is related to me. There's, there's the idea of a thinker and that's the me that I'm relating myself to. Thoughts are just flowing in nature. Good thoughts come, bad thoughts come. What thoughts to accept and what thoughts not to accept is up to you. And in the moment you accept the thought, oh, I'm thirsty, okay, I'll have some water. Or, oh, you know, next month is going to be a short check or what? See, that's a psychological type thing of looking into the future and trying to progress and protect and all this. The idea is that everything appears upon your spontaneous presence. So you'll know. Like you, you can even be like, okay, thank you, master. Okay, what to do, master? Oh, I don't know, you know. And then mantra. See, that's pretty cool, too. I've used this before where it's like, okay, I'm not sure what to do. I say, okay, master, I'm not sure what to do. And I sit there and mantra. And then you got to trust. You might sit and just perform mantra for like two or three, five minutes maybe. But then suddenly you'll get up and start going and doing and you'll see. And that's communicating with your own selfless self. You're constantly inviting the attention of the invisible listener. Yes. I have complete faith and trust in the master. Always. And I suppose the more you do that, the more easier it gets in terms yes. of... Yes. Yes. Rely on your selfless self. Stand on your own feet. Like master says, one of the reasons jumping around master to master... You're relying on someone else. You're bowing down to someone else. Truly, you're only bowing down to your own selfless self 
but you'll never know that. You'll never have the faith and the courage to step out. Because there might be something uh, better around the corner. Well, it, I, I can relate this to my own experience without getting into a lot of details, but in March of 2016, right after coming back from India, on Facebook, Ramakant Maharaj, who I was obviously friends with because we're in India and we're doing all this and I posted pictures and all this, but the admins that were holding Ramakant Maharaj unfriended and then blocked me. Oh. Now, that was powerful because that egoic sense that had started, and it was beautiful too, thank God that happened, because you have to stand on your own feet. You understand no matter how it looked, and I, got, I, I was shocked. I went offline for, for several months, basically, because I was like, oh my God, like what to do? And I had to sit and do mantra, and then Maharaj popped up and said, hey, why don't I see you on Facebook anymore? And, but the idea was, I had to stand on my own feet. I couldn't use even those admin as a crutch because like I was posting stuff and they would say, oh, don't post that. We like you to post this, post more of this, don't post that. And I'm not beating on anyone or giving anyone any hard time. I'm just saying how beautiful it was because there was a break. There was a standing on your own feet. And in this, seen later it had to be this way or i would have constantly been like looking for the breadcrumbs and the approval and and everything in order to keep in line like i don't want anyone to to think that maharaj even though maharaj wasn't the real person it was just the admin but nonetheless i don't want people to think that somehow i've fallen out of that's egoistic sense of self yeah. and that came because of mantra and then when the Ramakant Maharaj USA thing came about and I found out, oh, you know, I might only be able to see Maharaj one time, bow to his feet and that's it. I was, that was stepping forward in the reality too of master, if I can just bow to your feet one more time, that's all. I'm not desiring anything. I'm not desiring any, any kind of anything. And because of that, the whole Maharaj USA thing transpired quite beautifully like it couldn't have gone better because there was no longer a stake in it that i need to prove something or do something or any of this kind of stuff and that's that stepping forward in courage in every moment whatever's happening is happening and it 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 it, it was just a beautiful thing that it could not have happened had it not happened the way it happened. You know, you have to, like, like Maharaj says, you have to step forward. And even how this whole uh, video thing came about, you know, Kathleen knows, and, and I believe Trish knows too, because she was there. That night, Maharaj was downstairs in the basement giving mantra. I was just sitting on the couch, and people asked me about my experience in India and about the experience with the mantra and this sort of thing. And there was this flowing of dialogue. And his wife just happened to be behind listening to this. And his son was over there listening to this. And, and, and Maharaj being Maharaj, not the individual Maharaj, but being Maharaj had recognized this and came up and put his hand on the shoulder and said, when I go back to India, you can guide them. And see again, when Julie started doing this, this, uh, this thing, I didn't jump in. Why? Because if I jump in, then it's like, okay, I want something. I need something. No, 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 no. Just keep quiet. I'm good. I'm mantra. And after Maharaj left, you know, the spiritual intoxication was very, very strong. Like, oh, as everyone knows, it was just like, oh, mantra was like very beautiful because you had just been in Maharaj's presence and it was very, just a wonderful experience. So then all of a sudden, then Kathleen said, hey, would you be willing to, to come and, and, and share your experience, strength and hope, basically? And that, that was the time someone outside asked to come 
and do this thing. So here you have Maharaj who has given this diksha of go ahead and, and guide, and then it coming by itself. See, it's all selfless self. Yeah. And it had to be standing on your own feet. That's why it can't be how we're getting into this whole conversation. It can't be running from master to master because you're always going to be relying on someone outside of yourself that is actually your own self, but you won't be able to see this until you are relying on your own selfless self and no longer relying on things from outside. That was a long story just to say that, but. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, well, you know, just because me, my participant, you know, Kathleen here, um, mm. she just got this idea when she was talking to Trish and it just occurred, just came out of nowhere and said, well, maybe Julie never asked him to, to do, you know, maybe. And so I, and Trish says, yeah, sure. You know, go and ask him. And so that's what, what I do. Cause I, you know, it, it's like the self working in different ways, you know, yes. the self over here and the self uh, uh, in Trish and, you know, she's telling me, go ahead, do it. And uh, so that, you know, that it just worked out that way. So, you know, exactly. but it's, it's like the workings of, you know, it wasn't, you know, I don't know. It just, it just happened. There was that guru moving through the various forms, just like it did when uh, at Ramakant Maharaj USA, how everybody was taking mantra and doing this, and one circle was set up and everything was just flowing because it wasn't individuals. It was sad guru using these instruments as, you know, selfless self using these instruments. I say sad guru, but sad guru, selfless self using these instruments yeah. for devotion to its own yeah. self without taking an egoistic identity from it. But there was no one else that could do what you're doing. Well, again, and, and there's a lot of controversy. In, you know, it wasn't like there was another teacher. You know? and, and again, like I said, there was a lot of controversy around this because Maharaj, yes, he said, go and guide. So that was the one thing. Then people said, well, why are you holding these talks? And yet Maharaj then said, I really, I've seen your talks on Facebook. I really enjoy them. And go ahead, Sadhguru's blessings are with you, all of this. So then people would say, well, you should check with Maharaj and, and this and that. But the idea is that it was given Diksha, hand on the shoulder and said, conveyed, do this. Then this came about out of the blue. And then Maharaj then saw how that diksha had taken form and approved. So all of this is just selfless self. And all of it is exactly the way it's supposed to be. And that's also, too, why here, and we spoke about this before, too. Okay, what if no more people are coming? But see, there's no egoistic sense that says, oh my God, I've lost the Tuesday talk thing. It's not like that. I'm perfectly happy with myself, with self. And however that manifests, I have nothing to say about it. And that's the courage. That's the stepping forward in every moment. Master says you're a Brahmin. Live like Brahmin. These things come up in your experience. Step forward. Have courage and accept the reality that except your selfless self, there's no God, no Brahman, no Atman, no Paramatman, no Master. Nothing is there. There are no limitations other than the body limitations that you're believing. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> some uh, some uh, background noise there. Yeah, it's here. It's what? Let me turn up those. Turn up the volume here. Oh, uh, okay. Sounds <laughs> <laughs> like uh. Oh, Keith has something else to say here. 
Let's see. I practice. I'm going to put my glasses on for this one. I practice every day something that is sort of letting selfless self speak. I write any thoughts that refer to non-limit as opposed to limit, such as shared sharing is more real than own. Sharing is absolute and own is relative and only individual and other words and open concepts follow. And I don't know what they will be. We never know what we s s shall say next. That's kind of amazing. Yeah, I mean, when the spontaneous flow is, is happening, that's because you're, you're touching your selfless self. Your selfless self is speaking, and that's that spontaneous flow. And then there's no sense of, that's the key, though. I think this is a very big key is not to take a sense of ownership for what's being spoken. When that selfless self begins speaking and that spontaneous speaking is coming, not to take ownership of this. You know, even, and I've said this before, when I cut up the videos, it's a very odd experience because I'm watching the video and cutting it, but there is no sense that, that this one is the one that's speaking. <laughs> like, there, there's no like, oh, I said this, or I said, I have no idea what's being said. And I think that's why all the time, you know, what's written down and the, it can be contradicted in such a way because it's in the moment. The speaking is in the moment. There's no thought process. There's no, it's speaking outside of time, like Maharaj says, from the bottom of reality. Because there's no sense of a, of, of anything. I guess there's no, uh, no censoring or no, no, no filtering through anything, because again, nothing is here. It's there's. I can do this and know that this is. There's just nothing here. So you're, you're always communicating with your own selfless self. Even when the form that you're speaking to does not seem to be relating or understanding that that's your selfless self, it's you that understand. It's only you. That's why Maharaj all the time, he brushes aside when you say, oh, others do this or this other. No, no others. It's you. It's about you. Talk about you. How in your experience are you using mantra and how are you beginning to understand that everyone that you're speaking to is your own selfless self, that there is no body at all, that the body is basically just a voice box for selfless spell, <laughs> a voice box for selfless self to speak to itself. That sounded like a Dr. Seuss. <laughs> uh, he was very wise. He <laughs> <laughs> was like selfless self, a voice box for a <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yes, it's always you. Everyone is you. My presence is in every being. And any thoughts about like, oh, what happens when I die or whatever, the body doesn't even really die. It's just the presence is no longer in the body. And the body falls and deteriorates because it was just animated by selfless self. That's another cool thing. If you're looking at people and you think, okay, if the presence was removed from this, this person that's in front of me, if the presence was removed, it's just a dead body. Okay, so presence that I am one with my selfless self is in that body. And it's causing all that body's movements, actions, talking, seeing, everything. And again, going back to listening as your spontaneous presence prior to being this, after leaving the body. And the space in the kitchen, the space in the bathroom, Maharaj says all the time, space in the ashram, space in the toilet, walls fall, does the space in the toilet go to heaven or to hell and the ashram space go to heaven? No. 
It's space is space. Sky is sky. It's a mind that tries to label and identify and separate. And there's no mind at all. Yeah, nobody's ever been able to find a mind. Yeah, exactly. John, can I ask a question about the lineage? Sure. Okay, from my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, um, Ms. Argadatta went to Sri Siddhameshwar. Yeah. Says, at the same time, Ranjit was attending Siddhameshwar since he was 12 years old. Yes. Okay, so at some point, Siddhameshwar left his body. Ms. Agardata went on his own for a bit, and then he ended up starting teaching. And then I don't know anything about Ranjit, but there's the Ranjit Ashram, and then somehow Ramakant came under and is from that ashram. Could you clear up this? Yeah, I mean, Ranjit, I, I believe when Sri Nizagadatta Maharaj left the body, that Ranjit Maharaj then took over as like the the uh, the lineage master of, of Nisargadatta's lineage of Siddhar Meshwar Maharaj. See, Nisargadatta and Ranjit Maharaj are guru bandus, guru brothers, meaning oh. both have the same guru. Oh my, okay. okay. Then Nisargadatta Maharaj had Ramakant Maharaj as a direct student. Right, okay, yeah. Then Ranjit Maharaj had different various students as well, and I believe Ranjit Maharaj. If you look it up on Wikipedia, he says that he began uh, uh, teaching because Siddharameshwar Maharaj's daughter or granddaughter, I don't know exactly the, the specifics, but said she wanted the knowledge and that he felt he owed it to Siddharameshwar Maharaj to come and, and to be the teacher or to, to be master. And like he said, being master is not something that you want to do because it's a huge responsibility. And his, the reason, basically, that coming out is because he felt that it was, again, Guru Diksha for his master, Siddhameshwar Maharaj, his granddaughter or daughter. I'm not sure if it was daughter or granddaughter, but I know he came and, and began because of that. And Nizargadatta Maharaj... Um, just basically started having little talks in his uh, in his upstairs uh, place, and then people started hearing about him and coming and listening to him, and 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 it just it just happened. So after Ms. Agardata passed, did Ramakant start going to Ranjit's ashram or something? How how did he get into Ranjit's ashram? This I don't know. I know, I do know that Nizargadatta Maharaj, that Ramakant Maharaj is a disciple of Nizargadatta Maharaj, but just like there are people in the ashram now who are disciples of Nizargadatta Maharaj, but who are bowing to the feet of Ramakant Maharaj because he is Sadguru, but they are disciples of Nizargadatta Maharaj. A little bit um confusing in in this way but there are and i know this for a fact from being at the ranjit ashram there are several disciples of nizargadatta maharaj that are at ranjit ashram right now and who also then when the lineage master ranjit maharaj were bowing to ranjit maharaj because it's not a guy it's not a specific person exactly. It's the master. It is, and there is a, con, uh, what do you call it? A, a passing on, a, a transmission, so to speak. Again, now we're speaking about body knowledge and concepts, but there is a transmission of lineage to lineage master. 
And that's why they say Raja Diraj Sakona Shri Ranjit Maharaj Kije Raja Diraj Sakona Shri Ramakant Maharaj Kije. It's that's the Sadguru in different various forms, but the one Sadguru. Right. Well, when Ranjit passed, did he leave the ashram lineage to Ramakant? This is not exactly, it's not like that, uh, how they, they leave it. It's uh, basically there's a stepping up. This, the selfless self that steps up through, I'm not exactly sure how they like crown somebody or, or something like this, but it's the selfless self that steps forward. I believe if you read in Ramakant Maharaj's biography, it was they had no one. When Ranjit left the body, there was no one. And they came to Maharaj, Ramakant Maharaj, and said, what about our children? You know, we, we, we have no one. So then that somehow in the way he became the lineage master. I think it's so beautiful, the, the interconnectedness of all of those great masters. Absolutely. Yeah, very good. And see, if you look at it again, body knowledge wise and lineage wise, like there are a lot of lineages where you're on like the third or fourth rotation, so to speak, from the, the spiritual saint that's, that's known, let's right. say. But for, Ramakant Maharaj was right under Nizargadatta Maharaj. He was a direct disciple of yeah. Nizargadatta Maharaj. And now Ramakant Maharaj is passing this knowledge directly to you. So you are too... Nizargadatta Maharaj is your great grandmaster guru yes. type type yeah because Ramakant Maharaj talked about that when he was here in the USA he said my my guru is Nizargadatta Maharaj and my like grand guru is Siddhameshwar Maharaj yeah because I was drawn to Nizargadatta many years ago and just to be in this now and then I watched Ranjit videos and, and I love them. I mean, every word that all of these masters say are so clear and to the point and, and the truth. There's just no, there's just not one word is wasted. So beautiful. I'm so happy they're all in the same group. Yes. Oh. Let's see. Put my glasses back on here. What was the new book mentioned last week? Whoop. Mentioned Nizagadatta mentions the mantra a lot. Ah, yes. Beautiful book. Self Love, the original dream. Uh Sri Nizagadatta Maharaja's pointers to the reality. That's a lot to copy and paste in Facebook, but um that's the name of the book. And it is it mentions mantra. I mean, basically in every single sitting that, that Maharaj was there. Because I'm, remember that this book was only in Marathi and only distributed amongst those devotees that were in the ashram and, and directly related to the lineage. But now it's been translated in English and offered more widely. But it speaks about mantra. It speaks about Many of the things that Ramakant Maharaj speaks about, it falls right in line with that. Almost as if that book came after Selfless Self, which it did not, because it was around for a long time and was just now translated into English. But many of those line up even better than like, I am that or this and that. And then it's very, very good book. You can get that on Kindle on Amazon. Yes, I have because, it on Kindle. Because, yeah, because if you try and buy it in book form, you got to pay $20. It's very expensive. Yes. I'm reading the, the Dash Boat. Am I saying that mm -hmm. word right? That I, is an amazing book. Oh, yes. my. I feel like I'm sitting right at the, the master's feet. Absolutely. Oh, I am. Uh, I just can't get over how thrilled I am. And remember, that's your story. Uh, 
Yeah, I'd like that's to. the reader's story. And even in the end, the cool thing, I was blown away because Das Boden was like really, really an amazing book. And then in the end, it, it basically says, this is the selfless self talking directly to you. Where else would this knowledge have come from? You know, when you get to the, I'm sure you, have you read the, at the end part no, in the very no, I back? Read like 192. Or okay. I, I read very, it like, like so tiny, you know. Yes. Like one one little thing at, at a time per day. That's what I would. Well, I actually read a few pages, quite a few pages per day. Okay. I don't know. It's, it's just divine. Yes. And like I said, in the back. And not to spoil the book, but <laughs> in the back, it was amazing because after you listen to this book and, and you've read it and you've really, really felt your presence in this book and invited the attention of the reader that's reading its story, then in the back, it basically says, this book could have come from nowhere else except that selfless self speaking directly to itself in you. That was like, wow. Well, that the book that Andrew has quoted from, one of the teachers has mentioned that book, and I don't remember who, but it, it's an Eknard. Eknard. Nah. Does that um, ring any bells to you? No. I'm I'm not familiar with that. No. I'll ask Andrew next. Time. Yeah. Hmm. John, didn't you send us that a while back in like uh, in, in electronic form? One of those books? The Das Bode? Yeah. Yeah, it's in it's in PDF. It's a little different than the one that I was reading in Kindle, though. But yes, it is. It okay. is in PDF. As a matter of fact, that link goes to Google Drive and has all the lineage texts that I know of or that have been given to me through like the Ashram news feed of all the PDFs of the different various books of the masters of our lineage. All right. You could print it out, but it probably is quite a few pages. I would oh, think. yeah. <laughs> Does Bode is like large, large. large. <laughs> <All right. laughs> it would take quite a lot of printing. Yeah. <laughs> Better get it from Amazon. Yeah, yes. I got mine from Amazon. It's yeah. such a beautiful Yes, indeed. That, the meditations, uh, part of my morning kind of ritual type thing is I read the, one of the Neuropunas or whatever that you want to call it, the meditations of Srinya Zagadatta Maharaj. I'll read one of those and uh, then read a reading from this new book, the uh, Self-Love, the original dream, Srinya Zagadatta Maharaj's direct pointers to the reality. Which is an awesome book. Yeah, I'm reading that one too. And now, what did you say the first thing you were doing, Nisargadatta? Oh, yeah, Nisargadatta Maharaj Meditations. Nisargadatta Maharaj. Uh, oh, is it the book called Nisargadatta? Yeah, it's called well, yeah, Meditations uh, with, with Sri Nisargadatta Maharaj. Yes, yes. And basically, every day I'll read one of those just, you know, yeah. as a reading. I would have liked to have read Selfless Self, but they didn't put it in Kindle, so. And I, I, before I went to India, I actually took that huge book <laughs> and put on the train and read and read and read because I read it cover to cover like five times before going to India. Well, I hope to meet Maharaj in June. Ah, good, good. I mean, that I've got all my eggs in that basket. Good, good. Yeah, is he is he feeling better, Mom, uh, Maharaj? Because he was having some health problems. Yes, he's off to his native place, and uh, he'll be back. I think it said like February. There is Alibris Books, besides Amazon, also. Oh, okay. Keith says there's Alibris Books besides Amazon. Well, how do you spell Alibris? Um. A L 
I B R I S. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. That's from Keith. Maybe I can find that book. Yeah, that was Ranjit Maharaj, right? Um, what? The the one you're speaking about, the Eknath, or? Uh, no, I don't know who. Ah, uh, okay. In the lineage recommended that book in the reading list. Okay. And gotcha. I've been trying to find it. See, that's another thing, too, when we're talking about this reading. I'm not a big book reader, but when I was going to India, Maharaj had on his website, please read I Am That and Master of Self-Realization and Selfless Self to get accustomed to, you know, the speaking and what's going to be happening at the ashram. And I did. You know, it's like you begin to just do what you're told. I don't want to say that in a nasty way, but Master says, do this. You do it. Master says, do bhajans? Okay, listen to bhajans. Master says, meditate. Spend a, an hour or so just in meditation and then use mantra all the time. And, and these are the things. And, and when it's like, okay, read this book, do this. And now Maharaj has, has publicly said on, on a couple of occasions, self-love is a very good book. Well, and basically, go ahead. I put in a note to Lokpal on the on the Mixler. I'm oh. trying to get a hold of these bhajans so I can actually read them. And I, I did print out the whole Nashik bhajans, uh -huh. but, but when they're playing them, I can't find them anywhere in all the, what, 92 pages or so of the bhajans I have. And so I'm just trying to, I, I wish there could be a list of the morning bhajans, what they're called, so I can look them up. And then the, the noon bhajans, what, what each one is called, and then the, the nighttime ones. If you and go I to Ramakant, okay, go ahead. If you go to ramakantmaharaj.net, they should have not just the bhajans in PDF, but they should have like in an HTML format, morning bhajans, and then this is what it is. is. Afternoon bhajans, this is what it is. Evening bhajans. Evening bhajans are kind of strange because each evening has a different little yeah, I love thing that. to yeah. it, you know? Yeah, I know that there's random in that, but the ones yes. that are pretty regular, I'd like to at least learn them. Um, so what's an HTML? Is that H a well, on the website. If you go to ramakantmaharaj.net yeah. and then you go to their bhajan page, at least it used to be. I haven't been to their website in a while, but it used to be where you'd have, they'd have morning bhajan, which is Kakadarate, is early morning bhajan. Then they would have all that. Then they have morning bhajan, and they would have all that. Then they have evening bhajan, and they'd have all of that. It, would it be the, the listing of them or the actual bhajans to listen to? Ah, not the, well, yes, the actual bhajans to listen to, they have there too. It won't be the Mixler super really great ones, but they do have the, the lineage. As a matter of fact, I did... Uh, I don't know if you've seen it, but the YouTube with the English translation over top of the Bajan in a in a little video. Oh. Have you seen that or no? I don't think so. I'll send it out in the link after this. Okay. Uh, yeah. This okay. TV. Yeah, I don't have it either. There's, there's one chant that sounds like they're saying, "Hula da 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 da, hula hula." I'm looking every page for this this hula. <laughs> I can't find that chant anywhere. Is that in the afternoon or the morning or the early morning? It might be in the, the, the one here that starts at 5 o'clock, which would be 8 o'clock time in the evening. Oh, okay. That's that. Well, on our time, that one that, where they're Naranya, Naranya, like that? Yeah, that, but then, the then they start just, hula, da, na, 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 hula, and someone gets real loud going, hula, and so I'm looking for a hula. <laughs> On every page, I can't find that chant. A lot of them, I can't. Find. Yeah, if you're listening to it at eight o'clock in the evening, that's their early morning kakadarate. Yeah. No, I'm listening to it at five, but you guys are listening to it at eight. Okay, and that's the early morning kakadarate. You should be able yeah. to follow pretty much everything that they're doing on the early morning kakadarate because it'll be, you know, they do that Naranya very, very slow and yeah. then slow and then it starts to pick up and then it starts to pick up. And then, of course, Arate is always that, you know, you, how, you know how that progresses. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, but somehow they get under that other Kula chant, and it, I can't find it. It's just like... Oh, Gura Sach, Sachidananda... No, what is it? Maybe that maybe it's guru. It sounds like they're saying guru na 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 guru guru and I, I forget exactly but it's guru sa and, and they they turn around in a circle because it's really cool in the ashram when you're doing that and then you you because basically it's saying you're the center and I go around you. I, this that goes around you, you're the center and I go around you. And they, the Gura. All right. Sounds like they're saying. Gula. No, Gula. Guru. And so I was looking for H-U-L-A in the chanting book. Okay. Nope, nope. It's, it's Guru. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I hope I can find that. And like I said, after this, I'll send in, in the email to everybody the, uh, I have actually done YouTube videos of the Nashik Bajans, not the cool ones with the Mixler and all the drums and all that, but just the regular ones. Uh -huh. And then the American or the English writing of what they're actually saying over top of it. So you can oh, like listen to that oh, and I see what the words it. are. Yes, yes, yes. Especially yeah. the Abangas. The Abangas is powerful. What's you in the they, bonga? Is that when the guy just sings? Um, I love those. Just one person just sings. Yes, yes. That that actually is not a bonga. A bonga is in the evening, bhajan, and and it is. Uh, I'll I'll send the video. It's very wonderful, and oh, it, you can actually on that one you'll see it in your in your bhajan. And that was one of the things that I took and read because it says, whenever you're in trouble, read these abangas, you know, and, and this and that, and, and be happy, read abangas. And if you're at work, read abangas. And, and it's, it takes about probably five minutes to read through all of them, but there's 12 abangas and it's basically hammering that you are this selfless self. And it's and you have a, list, a list of the abangas? You can send me a list of them. How well, they're already in what you're holding. The uh, oh, they're in the no. the bajan, the PDF. They'll be in the evening bajan. Okay, okay, okay. And it'll say abanga, and okay. you'll you'll know, you'll see it. But I'll send the video, okay. which is it says what it's actually saying as they're doing the abanga. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. When I first came back from India, I thought, oh, it'd be kind of cool, and I used to listen to it on a, a tablet so that I could read what it's saying with the headphones, read what it's saying and listen to the, the Bajan and all of that. And, and yeah, it has Kakadarate. It has the, uh, Oh, the guru. Yeah. The, the guru Satra. I forget what it's <laughs> exactly the words are, but that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Yes. Oh, good. You made my day. Oh, good, good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It looks like it's about time. Okay. Good, good. So, now that Maharaj is in uh, his native place, I don't mind meeting every week if you want to do that again. Yeah. Or yeah. every yeah. guess. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's, right. it's really, you mean, it's, it's not like we're in a classroom needing to learn it's that support of just you know getting it to really sink in that you're so helpful with good good you know i mean it, it's just working on a very deep level good good okay so next tuesday at the same time yep sounds good great okay thank you All thank right. you very much very great bye-bye <laughs> bye, -bye. bye.